unto you alone we bring our sacrifice of praise we cannot do without you Jesus you have been so faithful to us you have been so caring and lovely to us we can never cease to exalt your name Jesus sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We'll bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We'll bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Can we make a joyful noise in his presence? Yeah. Great thing the Lord has done for me. Mighty thing he has done. That's why I will forever praise him. Hallelujah.
afflicts you with sickness here and there. But Jesus said, by his stripes you are healed. You will save your healing world where you are. I give God the praise. Great is the Lord has done. He has done it for me. Somebody, somebody said great. Here and there. But Jesus said, by his stripes I am healed. Receive your healing while where you are. I give God the prayer. Great thing the Lord has If you know you have been healed by God, you will give him praise. Tell him praise, praise him. Jesus said, no barrenness in the land. He gave her children to the barren walls. He's still the God of signs and wonder. Join me, give him the prayer. Great things the Lord has done. Great, great, great things. Mighty things the Lord has done. Somebody say great things. Jesus said, no barrenness in the land. He gave her children to the barren walls. He's still the God of signs and wonder. I have come to praise him.
so good. He's so good. He's so good. You are so good, verily, verily. Verily, verily, you are so good. Verily, verily. Lion of Judah, you are so good. Verily, verily. Verily, verily, you are so good. Verily, verily. Jehovah Shammah, you are so good. Verily, verily. Yeah. Verily, verily, you are so good. Verily, verily. Ah, but Father, you are so good. Verily, verily. Verily, verily. Yeah. You are so good. Verily, verily. Jehovah, this is you are so good to me. Savior in you. We 
sick that it took only God to heal them here's Jesus here's Jesus he's my redeemer he's my protector he's my everything ah Jesus we can never lack words to tell you how good you are to us we can never cease to exalt and to bless your name because the things you do are marvelous. Are there worshippers in the house? Are there worshippers in the house? Has the Lord been good to you? Can you tell him? He don't need a song to worship him. He don't need a song to tell him how good he is to you. Just whisper it even in your dialect in a way that you know you have expressed your heart to him. Jesus he is my redeemer he is so 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 good he is so so good oh my redeemer you are so good to a point in my life I thought everything has failed then the Lord gave me this song I'm like I'm still in a difficult moment but I just had to sing it he's good he's good He's my 
protector. My protector. Father, you are so good to me. You are so good to me. He is my redeemer. mighty hand club. He deserves all our clubs. that the Lord is good to us. I want us to lift up our voices as we appreciate him this morning. He is so good to us, so kind to us. And by the way, that is why you are here. If not because of his goodness, he will not be able to stand here today in the presence of the Lord. If not because of his kindness, his loving kindness that endured forever, we will not be able to stand here in his presence this morning. So let's praise him this morning for being so kind and so good to us. Let's thank him because he loved us. He gave his son, Jesus Christ, for us. Remember, while we are yet sinners, 
Jesus died for us. He is so kind. He is so good. Our God is so good. Our God is so kind. Let's exalt his name this morning. Let's thank him because of his faithfulness that fails not. Let's thank him because of his faithfulness over the ministry of our region overseas. here. Back there in the Philippines, the Lord is doing wonders. Let's thank him because of the testimonies that we do here about that land. The mighty things that God is doing in that city, in that country. There's no other person but God. So Lord, I appreciate you. I give you the praise this morning. Thank you, Father. Because of the great and wonderful things that you're doing in the midst of your people, of your church, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. That we see today of a truth, your word is here and amen. The gates of hell had not been able to prevail against your church. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the presence of God. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell him or her, welcome to the presence of God. Not sure the way you are saying it. Did he wake you up this morning? Who wakes us up in the morning? God, Jesus, wakes us up in the morning. It's amazing. You know, we have a sleeping pill, but I'm not sure we have any waking up pill. Is there any pill that can wake us up in the morning? No pill to wake us up, but we can have the sleeping pill. You know, when we begin to count the ceilings and we're not able to sleep, we can take that medication to cool the nerves and get us, put us on sleep. But when it's time to wake up, there's no waking up pill. So it's God that wakes us up in the morning. Amen? So we are happy. We thank God for waking us up, giving us good health. And here we are today in the presence of God. We are happy, super happy to see everybody here doing okay and lively and healthy. We give God the praise for making it a good day for us. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. Amen. So cheer up, my brethren. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to welcome those that are worshiping with us for the first time. Is there anybody here joining us for the first time? Praise the Lord. Media team, let's go to the announcement. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I think we have some technical glitches there. So while our engineers are working on it, maybe we can take. Praise the Lord. We just want to quickly remind us that our convention is fast approaching. And that will be coming up October 17 to 20, 2024. And um, just a quick reminder there that um, we should all try to register and then make all the necessary arrangements regarding transportation and the hotel where we'll be lodging during this program. Praise the Lord. We also want to let us know that yesterday um, somebody lost, uh, but we found a very beautiful Samsung phone after the wedding. So if your phone is missing, uh, probably you were super happy for the couple yesterday that you forgot your phone. So please, you want to see the ushers to pick up your phone. 
I don't know, the media, are we ready? Okay, let's take, sorry, because of our time, we want to take our tithes and offering as we take the Bible reading thereafter. Okay, praise the Lord. Yes, I want us to continue. All things work together, right? Everything works together for our good. Amen. So let's continue. Before technology came, our voices were there. John Wesley, Paul and uh, Peter, they didn't have all these, but God used their voices and the little things they had that time to do wonders. Amen. Um, this is the time for us to give our tithe and offering. As I wait for you to dip your hands into your pockets and your purses to bring out what we have today, I want us to read the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter three, verse nine. The Bible says, "We should honor the Lord, honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits." Of all thy increase. Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to give. We pray that this morning this gift, O God, will be acceptable and be useful in your kingdom and the blessings will be ours in Jesus' name. Bible reading will be taken as we give and prepare to take a Bible reading. We'll be taken from Matthew chapter 11. So if you want to give electronically, we'll have the Zill contact up there. So you can Zill your offering um, with the phone number we have there. And again, since um, we weren't able to play the video for the announcement, okay, we're ready? Okay. So let's just remind us that the weekly meetings remain the same. Uh, Monday, Bible study by 6.20 p.m. tomorrow. We're expecting you to join us online where we have this wonderful Bible reading. Sorry, Bible study taken by our, region, uh, our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumiyi. So we invite every one of us here present this morning to always try and join this Bible study time. It's a great time to be in the presence of the Lord. And on Friday, we have our Friday revival service again, which starts by 6.20 p.m. in the evening. We also expect us, as we are fully present here today, to try and be present during this revival service. And on Wednesdays, we have a seniors evening with Jesus for our mothers and fathers in the faith who are 65 years and above. So we encourage you again to join this meeting with the Lord by 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. Then Thursdays, we'll have the kids, children, Bible class, which begins by 6 in the evening for the children. Then by 7, we'll have the youth coming together again to have their Bible study. So we encourage parents to encourage children, support them to be able to join these programs. We have any other announcements during the week I want you to keep an eye on our group chat that is where we post some announcements that probably pop up during the week so that you'll be able to keep abreast of information that comes up in our lives so now we want to take our bible reading as we read the book of matthew chapter the media team has instructed me to take it from here because of the uh 
to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, Matthew 11. And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples, and are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? That what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses that what went ye out for to see a prophet yea i say unto you a more than a prophet for this is he of whom it is written behold i send my messenger before thy face which shall prepare thy way before thee verily i say unto you among them that are born of women there hath not risen a greater than john the baptist Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the kingdom and violence, and the violent take it, it by force. 13. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. That whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the market and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. But John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He had a devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man glutinous and a wine biber a friend of publicans and sinners, for wisdom is justified of her children. Then began he to upbraid the cities where most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon a day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the day for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight, all things are delivered unto, my, unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son, but the Father, Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in Jesus' name.
Let us pray. Father, we've just had the choristers say to us, saying to us, reminding us of the need to desire to do your will. We pray that, Father, that you will impress it heavily upon our hearts and give us the strength, the spirit, give us the ingredients. Father, give us that affinity to your will, that passion to do your will at all costs, regardless of the confrontations, regardless of the obstacles, regardless of what the adversary may be doing, regardless of the climate, the climate, the condition, the culture in which we're in. We're praying that, Lord, you will help us to be alive to righteousness, to be dead, dead to the things happening around us, quicken us spiritually, give us vision, give us the ability to hear what the Spirit is saying, give us, O oh God, abundant life, the life that is godly, the life that is active, the life that makes up to look up unto God and not to man, the life that makes us to rely acknowledging our weaknesses but relying on your strength to live day to day for you give us give us father in jesus name we have prayed amen praise the lord let's look at matthew chapter 21 i read verse 28 matthew chapter 21 I will read verse 28. But what think ye? What think ye? A certain man had two sons. Came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented. He repented. Mark that word, repented. It's a central theme when it comes to us connecting with the Father when it comes to us, becoming who the Father wants us to be. He repented. So we're going to look at that word. What does repentance mean? Or mean, I mean to say. And here the repentance was, he said, to the right direction. It was a transformational repentance. I take that again. He answered and said, I will not. But after what he repented and went. Verse 30 Everybody read me verse 30, everybody. And he came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Verse 31, everybody. Whether of them twain did the will of his father? They say unto him the first. Jesus said unto them, verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. And I read verse 32. For John came unto you, in the way of righteousness, and he believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. You see here, Jesus begins this parable, we'll talking about two sons, and I want to dwell on the subject, the power of critical thinking and meditation on the word. Can I hear everybody say that with me? The power of critical what? Thinking and what? And meditation on the word. Let's say that again, everybody. The power of critical thinking and meditation on the word, on the word. You know we're talking about the word of God, right? And that's how Jesus says it. What think ye? What think ye? This is not talk about your opinion just here. But what are you thinking? Are you thinking deeply? Are you thinking critically? Today the world, traditional world, pride in critical thinking when it comes to education. It's a major theme today. But the word of God, we're not talking about all these other things happening around us. The Lord's saying, what think ye? I'm about to get a very important kingdom message to you. I'm about to pass a lesson that may define and will define 
on whether you will enter the kingdom of heaven and see God at the end or not. I'm about to pass a message that does have connotation on whether you will continue to walk on or in the narrow way or you deviate into the broad way. I'm about to get a message to you that will define whether you will lose your place in his, in the kingdom of God while all the publicans and the halots are passionately being tired of their old way of, ways of life and are desirous for a change and they are coming in by faith. I'm about to pass a message to somebody here today who may think, I have been so long in the kingdom, I know it all, by the length of time, by my name, by my parental roots, and perhaps by my pedigree, my giftings. I, I, can, I have all these gifts. I've helped people. Oh, my generosity. Perhaps, didn't you know I'm Holy Ghost filled? Baptized in the Holy Ghost. I cast out demons. I beheld Satan fall like lightning when I went out to preach the gospel. Jesus says, wait a moment. What think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. Where afterward he repented and went. Verse 30, he came to the second and said, Likewise. He answered and said, I go, sir. He even added, sir, to that. He adds a very respectful tone to that. He adds the religious dictions and religious tone to that. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Wherever he leads, I go. No, chorus, and you sang very well today. Maybe he's with a chorus, uh, choir group. And um, perhaps in some other section of a church, department in the church. He says, sir, I go. He sounds very polite. He sounds very religious. He sounds very godly. He sounds compliant. But the outcome, something, something, something happened. Like I was yesterday, I was hearing, I keep hearing the word, life happened to this person. That's a new one I'm getting now. Something, life happened. But he did not go. And the Lord asked the question, whether of them twain did the will of his father. Many are getting disconnected with the will of God for their life. Some people don't even want to hear this. They claim, they say, God is made us so powerful that we don't need to rely on God anymore. We need to just take our decisions, take our own decisions. We don't need God. Choose for yourself. Choose a business for yourself. You don't need God to choose a business. You don't need God to choose a career. You don't need God to choose a spouse. You don't need God to do. Choose. Make choices. Just choose. Just leave. Just Get out of your home. You don't even perhaps need that quiet time with God to pray, to seek for his will today. May I remind you, a praise worship leader said, the power, the ability to even wake up in the morning is not yours. Some went out for the normal day like other people, but never returned. Some never. Some decided to sit in their homes, in their houses, and the thing came crashing. May this bring us back to that point where we are thoughtful, where we are asking God to help us be reliant on him to just make it through life and through our journey here on earth in Jesus' name. Can I hear a louder amen? It's a very profound question. It deeply invites us to reflect on the meaning of our actions and our responses to God's word in particular. He emphasizes, just emphasizes critical thinking and genuine reflection, meditation, not only to 
understand his teachings and say, I understand his teachings, but now to apply them to our lives. He said, I won't go, but think about it, repent, and after what he goes. You see there, the going, the doing, but not just the hearers of the word that are blessed, but the doers. Can I ever say the doers of the word that are richly blessed? Blessed. So we also see in this passage an illustration of the condition of human hearts. The nature of man is going to fall under this category. It talks about also the consequences of rejecting God's call to the path of genuine repentance. We're going to look at three, three points before we pray today. The first one is the call to engage our minds in faith and the importance of meditation on God's word. The call to engage our minds in faith, and saying God's word, and the importance of meditating, not just engage, but meditating on the word of God. And then the second thing we're going to look at is the condition of the unrepented natural man and the consequences of lack of genuine repentance. The condition of the natural man who is not repentant. And the consequences of lack of sincere, honest, genuine repentance. And lastly, we're going to look at the transformative outcome of combining critical thinking and meditation upon taking conscious steps to genuine repentance. We're going to look at the outcomes. We're going to look at the, we're going to the consequences of thinking and meditating on God's word when it's followed up with repentance, genuine conscious steps for genuine repentance. All the points look like uh, sentences. We'll take them one after the other. Number one is the call. The call. Everybody say the call. Can you say the call? Praise the God. It's a call to engage our minds in faith. And the importance of meditating on God's word. Matthew 21, 28. We see here, but what think ye? What think ye? This question encourages listeners to use their minds to ponder on the situations. Or the situation being talked about by Christ here. And to come to an honest conclusion about which of what he was going to talk about makes resonates with God's will. And he says, a certain man had two sons. He came to the first and said, son, go walk today in my vineyard. And, and he answered and said, I will not. Afterward, he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. And went not. But I want to focus on these Phrase, what think ye, or sentence, what think ye? We see here the Lord is calling you and I to be not passive listeners of the word. He's calling you and I to be active when we are reading his word. Engage your mind. Engage your being. You know, we're made of spirit, soul, body. It's possible that you can be here with me, but, you know, and be somewhere else. It's so possible that you're reading the word, but not really paying attention. It's possible that you're actually, even though you're here, you know, you're browsing and checking on the internet. It's very possible, while the phone is meant to be, a tool for you to check the word, but you actually checking your emails, you're perhaps texting a friend, and not that you work for the fire department in case there's an emergency. You're texting them, telling them, I'm in service today. 
in case there's something, reach out to me, call me, I'm going to respond, and all that. But you are absent-minded. The Christian faith is not blind. God invites you and I to think, to look, to hear, to touch, to sense, to respond to his word. To discern the truth in his word. To recognize our shortcomings as you read. You're asking questions. How does he apply to me? What am I seeing? What are you saying? Do I understand what you're saying? Even though I've read this passage of the Bible over and over and over, but in this year, the Lord's year 2024, and September 15th, not September 15th, 1960. September 15th, 2000 and what? Not September 15th, 2010. September 15th, 2024, in the United States of America. Not September 15th, 2010 in Ogbomosho village or Okreka village. It is September 15th, 2024 in Washington, D.C. What is the Lord saying to me? There's going to be a message for somebody here today. And there will always be a message for someone who is ready to engage God, engage him in his word. Isaiah 1, 18 says, God said, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. And he expects this to be our attitude all the time. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Even in the formative years of Jesus' ministry, we find him as a young child engaging people in the temple. In Luke chapter 2, time will not permit us to look at Luke 2, 46 and 40. Well, let's look at it. Luke chapter 2, verse 46. Turn your Bible with me to Luke chapter 2. We look at verse 46. Luke 2, 46. We find here, and it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Critical thinking leads to engagement should lead to asking questions, not just questions that are applicable to other people, but asking questions that are even applicable to you, primarily. And all that heard him were astonished and did what at his understanding and the sort of answers that he gave. So we see here this example of Jesus, how he engages people in the world because he's engaged in the world, he's the world himself, and he's calling you and I to do the same, to have us an attitude of critical thinking, an attitude of engagement, an attitude of asking questions, not questioning the word of God, not questioning the authority of God, but questioning your feeble mind and questioning your feeble faith, questioning your weaknesses, calling your weaknesses to order, calling your shortcomings to order, not asking, questioning God for blessing you, questioning God for giving you an Eve in your life and uh, questioning God for this. Even some people, all the blames go to the serpent. The serpent has suffered enough. And he will continue suffering. Well, he hasn't suffered enough. There's much more suffering. But don't join the serpent where he is. Take an exemption from that destiny. Take an exemption from that eternal destruction that will come on the devil. I pray the Lord will give you wisdom, give you understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're call to examine, question ourselves, not the word of God, not the integrity of God that many are doing today in the society, not the person of God, question our own self in order to deeply understand what faith is about. God has given us minds to engage with his word and we should use them to grow in wisdom. It's, and it's very beneficial when we do this. Matthew 21, 28, but what think ye? What think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go walk today in my vineyard. 
He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. This was a command. The Lord said, think about this. Look at that word. Think about it. A certain man has to. And he came to the first and said, go. He didn't say, please go. He didn't say, go if you want. He said, go. Can everybody say, go? Have you read the scripture repeatedly and heard that word go in different instances? Go is not asking you to debate it. Go means what? Go. Those in the military understand that word go. And we have, of course, we have officers in the military here and uh, soldiers in the, in the United States Army here. When they hear the word go means what? They hear the word go, they do what? And haven't you heard of a word that obey before what? How many of you were in the Boy Scouts? How many of you were some sort of a paramilitary organization? What do you hear? Obey before what? Is it? Wait a minute. See, I understand. Go means what? Go means what? You don't complain. Why, 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 why? Try to cross the T and dot the I. Go means go. How can we understand the military people out there understand that language much more than the soldiers of a cross? Those, the Bible says, they wrestle not against flesh and blood. And the word of God tells us the kingdom of darkness, the agents of darkness, the priests of Pesha, the witches and wizards, they don't argue with their master. When they hear, move, they move. That's why at times it's very difficult to cast them out of an individual. It's very difficult to displace them of their habitation. It takes a higher power. And now if God, if you, if God is going to use you to do any of those things, you're going to be a man under authority. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're going to be a man, you have to be a woman or a man under authority. The centurion came to Jesus he said, I, I said, go, and they go, Lord, speak the word only. And the Lord spoke the word, and immediately the miracle took place. No wonder we struggle to get things done. We struggle to even win souls. We struggle to displace the, the devil from people. We struggle. There's a whole lot of struggle. But may the Lord, through this study, help us to think critically and bring us out of all our struggles and we begin to see, of course, we begin to see our signs again in Jesus' name. I want you to say, God, bring me out of my struggles and restlessness, restiveness. And bring me to a place of peace and cooperation with your will, with your spirit, so I can begin to be fruitful again in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord will do it for you in Jesus' name. I said the Lord will do it for you in Jesus' name. Meditation is about pondering, reflecting on the meaning of what the Lord is saying. Let it shape the heart. Let it to shape the mind. It's not just about reading the Bible, but allowing the truth in the Bible to permeate, to sing, and guide the daily action. I've heard this word marinate. It's another word that's coming everywhere, marinate. You allow you... You know, you marinate fish, right? Some of you, except those who don't cook here. You know, you can tell when somebody just dump the sauce on the, dump the sauce on the food, and somebody who is uh, soaked, someone who is soaked the food, soaked the fish, soaked the meat in the sauce. So when you chew, it says, "Taste what? It tastes how? It tastes sweet. The life will be sweet in Jesus' name." I say your life will be sweet in Jesus' name. Joshua 1, 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. And the Bible ends by saying, For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Can I hear me say prosperous? And you will have, that shall have good success. Is anybody here who wants to be prosperous? You want to prosper? Lift up your hand if you want to prosper. Say, God, I want you to prosper me. And God is saying, he's going to prosper you in Jesus' name. The things of God come, they're conditional. 
He said, this book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth. The language of the world should not be in your mouth. The foul languages, the words, you should never. You have no business in the midst of people who use foul languages even. No, you don't belong there. And if you're showing up there, you are there to pass a message. You should never be mischaracterized as one of those people. If such words are dropping from your mouth accidentally, go back. Calvary, it means the world has entered you, you become part of the world. Even when you're angry and annoyed with yourself or with someone, if those kind of words are coming out from your mouth, it's an indication that you need to critically think about what the Lord is saying. Even Lot that was in Sodom, he was not happy with Sodom. Even Lot that did not respect his senior and decided to choose, say, put himself before even his uncle. And when the uncle gave him preference, was dis disrespectful. He should have just submitted and said, uncle, there's no way I'm going to choose before you. There's no way. You're older than me. Give me whatever you, it deems fit to you to, to, to give, give to me. I'm not just going to come before you. But Lord, even with all those mistakes, he still had a form of godliness in him. That in Sodom, the Bible said he was grieved. Can anybody say grieved? Well, the Bible used the word righteous, Lord, was grieved. He was not happy with the things that were happening. Now, if you come to the point where you're comfortable, you are conditioned, now you're responsive to the things happening around you, to the way people talk in your profession, to the way people talk in the marketplace. You are now responsive to the way people talk in that space. There is an indication that the Lord is saying, you need to think this moment. Critically come down to this moment and think about yourself, reflect, meditate. Because God's desire for you and I is that we will have good success. God wants us to prosper. Good success is different from an ordinary success, different from a natural success. The natural success, you could have all the world, the natural success, the traditional success, but lose your soul. And the Bible says, what will it profit a man or a woman or a boy or girl if he will gain all the fame, all the world, and all the things that people celebrate but lose his own soul? God wants you to have good success. Turn your neighbor and say, God wants you to have good success. And you will have good success in Jesus' name. Psalm 1, verse 2. Psalm 1, Verse 2. This is what brings alignment to the word of God. Psalm 1 verse 2. The Bible says, but his delight is in the law of the law. Or in the law of the Lord. In his law that he meditate day and night. Verse 3. Read with me everybody. Verse 3. And he, sh let's read from verse 1. We're going to read this together. Everybody. Psalm 1 verse 1. They're going to project to you. Psalm 1 verse 1. Can we read together everybody? Verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of a scornful. Verse 2, everybody. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night. Everybody, verse 3. Like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. We just read it. Now, sisters, you're going to read verse 1. Brothers, you're going to read verse 2. And everybody will read verse 3. Now, let's rise up on our feet as we engage in the word. Let's rise up on our feet. You've been sitting all day. I know. Rise up. Now, you have to let you go. Praise God. Are you ready to read? Who are the people reading verse 1? Okay, sisters, over to you. One, two. Brothers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night. Everybody, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, turn to your neighbor and say, your leaf will not wither. And what you do will prosper, because you will dwell in the center of God's will. 
you will meditate upon the word of the Lord. Your delight will be in the law of the Lord. Day and night. When you are awake and when you are asleep. And listening to this, you will be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water. I prophesy upon your life. Divine freshness. I speak into your life. Revival. You will bring forth fruit in his season. Your leaves shall not wither. Whatsoever. Because you're in the center of God's will. Whatsoever. Tell them whatsoever means whatsoever. Tell them again whatsoever means whatsoever. And it doesn't matter where you are, say whatsoever. You do will prosper. It sounds like prayer is ongoing already. Wait a moment, sit down in his presence. We look at the second point before we pray. The condition of the unrepentant natural man and the consequences of lack of genuine repentance. You look at Matthew 21, verse 28. The what think ye? What think ye? Are you thinking about what the Lord is saying at this moment? Are you thinking about what the majority, the popular opinion is? What think ye? Are you thinking about your eternal destiny or you're thinking about the, your gains here on earth? What think ye? Are you thinking about the consequences of your actions eternally? Or you're thinking about the immediate gratification? What think ye? A certain man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go walk today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. He came to the second and said, Likewise. He answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. We see in this passage two responses to the father's call. One says no, but later repents and obeys. While the other says yes, but does not go. The second son typifies the unrepentant natural man who is outwardly, outwardly compliant, but inwardly disobedient. The first one says yes. Or this, I mean, this one says yes. I mean, to the second one says yes without action. The second son says yes without action. And yes without action means nothing. Yes, but no action, no activity, no godliness, no repentance means nothing before God. It sounds like lip service, empty promises, and these do not please God. God desires obedience in the inward part, and it has to be demonstrated in the outward part. Some people say they are believers, they are born again, but the way they talk does not represent the Bible. Says, if any man is in Christ Jesus, can you ever say that? If any man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. The way you talk will relate to the new life. The way you dress will relate to the new life. The companions you keep will relate to the new life. If you're a child of God, you don't sin anymore. Because the power comes from God not to sin. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can I hear amen? Yes, without action means nothing. But we also see the other one. It says no. No, is, saying no to the Lord is not good either. Saying no to the Lord is not a good, it's not a good thing to do. However, he said no. It goes onwards, like in Nicodemus, and goes and meets Jesus by night. He said, what must I, you good master, what must I do to be saved? He says no, but comes down his knees afterwards in a secret place. In